genetically modified crops, bringing to an end a 10-year ban on importation and planting of genetically modified foods. In a cabinet decision, the government indicated the decision was to address the country's food security that has been ravaged by effects of drought and pests. And as Sam Ogina now reports, food scientists have welcomed the move as a bold step in adopting science to fix the food security in the country. Good morning, good people. Good morning. How are you? Good. The 10 year ban on the importation of GMOs has finally been lifted. The cabinet has ratified the decision to make genetically modified foods legal in Kenya. Ravaged by adverse effects of climate change and erratic rainfall to address food shortage, President William Ruto has sanctioned the use of biotechnology. Food scientists involved in the research of genetically modified crops in the country have welcomed the president's move as a bold step in the use of science to address food security. This is a, a sign that the president is going to use the evidence generated by scientists and he also believes in his own scientist, him being a scientist, and uh, he is showing us that he wants to believe in institutions. In lifting the 10-year ban, the government cited recommendation of a task force that was put in place to review matters relating to GMOs and food security. The dispatch from cabinet indicated as part of the medium to long-term responses to the ongoing drought and as a progressive step towards significantly redefining agriculture in Kenya by adopting crops that are resistant to pests and disease. Cabinet has also considered various expert and technical reports on adoption of biotechnology, including reports of the Kenya's National Biosafety Authority, World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization, United States of America's Food and Drug Administration, and the European Food Safety Authority. Scientists globally, including academies of science, health, engineering, agriculture, have thoroughly assessed the safety of foods developed from biotechnology and they have all come to one verdict that GM crops and GM foods are as safe as traditional foods and they don't pose any concern or any any safety issue that would be a Government has also given the green light to the importation of genetically modified white maize. Food scientists indicate biotechnology can be used to increase yields, reduce harvest time, and also reduce pesticides used on crops that eventually end up polluting the environment. The government's turn about to adopt GM crops coming at a time 23 counties in arid and semi-arid regions face severe drought. You are able to grow food faster. The, the improved seed grows faster and so if you reduce even by 10 days the, 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 the harvesting of your crop and in times we have seen even up to two months uh, you can reduce the rate at which the crop will stay in the field so you access the food uh, in, in much less time. Also approved is the adoption of genetically modified cotton, popularly known as BT cotton. This coming a day after the president announced in Homa Bay, a cotton growing region for the need to adopt productive cotton seeds. In Karachonyo, where vast cotton farmlands lay idle after collapse of the sector in the region, welcomed the president's move, saying it spelled hope to the one time main economic mainstay of the region. <laughs> Kuna moja moja imekuwa mashuri, lakini mwaka huu mbego ni mbaya. Mini inaweza kulilia kama inaezekana, rais atulete factory ili ata, ata watu wetu wavijana wa, wa, wa wanaweza kuandikwa kwa hiyo factory ya pamba. Na tena, tunaweza kuyuza kwa uraisi kwa sababu factory itakuwa karibu na sisi. Kenya has been reluctant to approve the import or planting of GMOs since November of 2012. Amid a debate about the safety of GMO crops, which are touted to have several advantages, such as resistance to drought, pest and higher yields. The move had restricted the sales of products from U.S. companies such as Monsanto, which have been seeking potential new markets like Kenya. Sam Ogino, Citizen TV, Nairobi. So let's have a quick conversation on that. And joining me online now is Anne Maina. She's the National Coordinator Biodiversity and Biosafety Association of Kenya. Anne, good evening. It's good to see you. Is this the right move that the cabinet is adopting now? Thank you, Trevor, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this is not definitely what we ex it's not def it's definitely not what we expected. It's not the right move. 
Uh, for us, uh, for a long time, we have always praised the Kenyan uh, government, the Kenyan uh, cabinet of taking the precautionary principle, principle uh, on issues related to genetic modification. You may ask yourself why our, we have raised so many concerns about GMOs. Most of them are socioeconomic because who will control this seed? When you look at the issue, for example, of BT cotton, farmers already this year have been complaining about lack of access to seed. Uh, when you talk about BT cotton, the cost, uh, we had a chance, a uh, uh, civil society, to go to Burkina Faso in 2017. And uh, Burkina Faso had adapted BT cotton, GMO cotton. But after some years, dropped it because the quality of the cotton was poor. Number two, the price it attracted was low, was low in the market because of poor quality. And the price of the seed was 40 times the cost of conventional. When you look at maize, maize is a staple in Kenya. We eat it as uji, ugali, maindichoma, and everything. Yeah. Uh, this is a, is, a, is a staple crop, and uh, we cannot afford to gamble with it because of the effects it might have on the uh, environment and also on human health. So, so your, your concern is more about the demand and supply and price fluctuations rather than safety of the GMO crops? No, no, no. It's not just not just about that. Also, in terms of safety, scientists have shown that uh, uh, most of the research that has uh, that is done on GMOs, and for example, look at Kenya. For the last ten years, the multinationals have come in and worked with our local scientists under the WEMA Water Efficient Maize for Africa and the Teller Program, but the results have been quite uh, disastrous. And so, why the big push? Uh, one of it is access for markets for these multinational companies. So when they access the market, they control the seed. He who controls the seed will control the food and eventually even control our, our lives because food is a, a basic commodity in our lives. Uh, when you look at, for example, the US-Kenya trade negotiations, uh, the Americans have been keen for Kenyans to lift this ban because they want their companies to access this market. Uh, the chemicals that are associated with the production of GMOs, for example, if you look at glyphosate, uh, what is popularly called as Roundup, uh, there have been questions or very many concerns that have been raised in the US. There are over 30,000 cases of where the company that produces this particular chemical has been sued because people have developed cancer as a result of using uh, glyphosate. Yeah, but that's, those reports you're talking about, Anne, were inconclusive because there are other reports from the Kenya's National Biodiversity Authority, World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization, United States of America Food and Drug Administration, that's the FDA, and European Food Safety Authority, EFSA. Are they all wrong? Is that what you're saying? I think it's important to look at uh, both the, the two arguments. In the US, even you just Google one person called Dwayne Johnson who sued the company that produces Roundup uh, after developing non Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, which is skin cancer. He sued and was paid a huge amount of money by the company, less the company argued, but still he was paid in millions. And now there are over 30,000 cases. People have developed skin cancer because of the use. And what you associate, a lot of times when these uh, GMO crops are grown, they are, you use a lot of chemicals and uh, pesticides, some of these toxic pesticides that we've spoken about that have very many challenges in terms of our health. So we are asking ourselves, as we open the doors for GMOs and uh, open the doors for these companies, and often you find these companies are selling the seed, selling the, the fertilizer, selling the pesticides. Uh, are we going to, uh, with one hand, open this door and with the other hand, increase our health costs because of the challenges related? Already Kenya is having challenges uh, with health because of the lack of control in terms of uh, the chemicals that are used by our farmers. Yeah. And this is very important for our health. But and that brings me back to what I was saying, that there's no conclusive research and evidence that it is what causes cancer, because even without the GMO right now, we still have cases of cancer. 
Yes, because uh, some of the chemicals that we're using, glyphosate is widely used in Kenya. And with opening the markets for GMOs, there will be a huge increase in the use because they are, they, they, the way to manage the weeds is to use the glyphosate. And so that will increase the challenges. Already glyphosate is in use in Kenya. And Biba Kenya, together with other three organizations, Rodi Kenya, Koan, and uh, Root to Food Initiative, already in 2019 took a petition to parliament for calling for a government to withdraw the toxic pesticides in the market. And after conclusions by the Parliamentary Committee on Health, the Pest Control and Products Board is working on a way to reduce these uh, toxic pesticides that were seen to cause cancer, some causing challenges with mutagenicity yeah. and even the challenges of killing our pollinators. Which, which by the argument uh, of the experts, Anne, is that these same GMOs will reduce the use of pesticides, which you're saying is a bad thing. But either way, one of the issues they've said is it will reduce the use of pesticides. It's also drought resistance. In a time when more than 23 counties are facing severe drought and our weather is changing, what then do you suggest as an alternative? I think looking at uh, Kenya and uh, the world, the way they are moving, many of the countries, for example, Europe, is moving away from the intense use of these pesticides and the growing of genetically modified food. If you travel, you'll find a lot of push uh, on agroecology, growing local and uh, growing without a lot of these pesticides. Even Kenya is going uh, later in December, we are going to the post-2020 uh, the post biodiversity framework in uh, Montreal to discuss how to move out of uh, these monocultures yeah. and to diversify our food systems for better health and nutrition for our communities. All right. Thanks, Anne. Anne Maina, their National Coordinator, Biodiversity and Biosafety Association of Kenya. This is a conversation that we'll keep having and have more people, more experts willing